Ach, you poor thing. Come in, come in. Warm your waterlogged beard by the fireplace, and I'll drop a hot drink for you. I cannot decide if you're brave or foolish for wandering about by yourself with old one eye still howling out there. Yeah? Never heard old one eye? Ah, well, there is a tale. Now, you might know how we dwarves hold Sirius in high regard. But what you might not know is our tourists may his frozen heart boil. <laughs> is the primal responsible for creating the dwarves during the Age of Myth? During that time, lad, many a dwarf waged war in the name of their god and creator, just as the other races did. But what set Arcturus apart was his cruelty. When a dwarf fell in battle, his last breath rattling his stout bones. The twice accursed primal would come to keep the brave warrior from meeting his ancestors and force the poor soul to keep fighting. It weren't long before there were roving bands of the frozen dead, trapped in their own icy flesh, always looking for the next poor soul to join them in their eternal wanderings. Now, any half-witted fool will tell you that Sirius ain't exactly one for handing out favours for nothing. But when the alternative is to wander the frozen waste without even the promise of resting with your ancestors, after you give everything for your supposed god, a bit of warmth in the cold of winter sound better than the whole pile of gold. So, it came about that during one of the last battles, before the Celestials joined the War of the Primals, as many dwarves were huddled together to keep from freezing to death, a small spark, and then a flickering flame appeared in the midst of the dwarves. Now they all thought the Primal of Flame had come to burn them all to ash, but no, he called out to the dwarves from that small light. The flame told our forefathers they'd been found worthy of his favor. Too scared to plead to the merciless primal of ice, but too wary to trust the word of another primal, they questioned the flame. We know you are to be the father of the orcs. Why come to us? The orcs be but bear crack of the flame. Only those with iron in both heart and soul are worthy to bear my fiery gift. To prove ye be my chosen people, I've prepared the mountain fields with jewels and riches beyond your wildest dreams, and where winter's chill will never again claim ye. All I ask in return is that ye renounce your allegiance to Arcturus and bow instead to me. The warmth of the flame left them as a chill wind came rushing through the gathered dwarves, bearing the icy voice of the dread. What was that light howl, the pitiless wind? Have I not forgiven you from using the power of another god? T'was not but the light reflecting off a blade of ice, bellowed the brave soul. Why then do you tremble in fear, the wind asked, as frost swirled about the speaker's beard. Your trembling betrays your lies. I tremble in anticipation of serving ye, boomed the shivering warrior. I know ye grant the gift of immortality to all who fight for ye, and I want no more than to see your will done. The wind, fooled by the flattery, left the band of dwarves as they gathered together and swore to bring their kin to the promised mountain. But not all their kin was true, for one had not the heart of iron, but of ice, as he betrayed the plans of his kin to the dread. Having no choice but to slay those they called kin, the first adherents of Sirius cut through those whose hearts were made of brittle ice, their souls of stout iron. Unyielding against dead and betrayer alike, fleeing from the blasted lands, till they reached the mountain promised by the raging flame. There they found what had been promised by the god, gold, jewels, and a flame within the mountain which warded the way the biting cold. There and then the first dwarves of Sovermar were made, pledging undying loyalty to the raging flame causing the mountain to shake to its roots at their resounding oath. Then the flame revealed itself to be the blessed father of the forge himself. He taught his newly chosen people his ways, but the dread had also heard the resounding cry, and the winds howled in fury as his icy malice took hold of the land of Jorenheim, traveling from the east to cover the land in ice and snow. His rage stoked at the insult. The raging flame took to the field and sought out that frostbitten coward. For a thousand days and nights, the two rage against one another, the fire and ice still battening to this day. Till at last, 
Ujog found its mark on the dread's brow, and a single eye was knocked free of the primal skull. Retrieving the prize, Sirius sought to break the eternal winter that now gripped Jorunheim. To that end, he traveled to the first forge of Aldera to smash the lidless eye to bits. Seven times shall I strike the foul eye, said he, and seven times shall the foundations of the world tremble till at last the deed be done. But the dread would not allow his curse to be so easily undone as he sought to keep old Jog from his lidless eye. A brave Dorvin smith, barely even grown into his beard and about a serious, stood atop the mountain peak, hammer in hand, an anvil at his side. Bringing his hammer down on the anvil, so hard the mountain rang with hammer blows, his voice reached the ears of the dread. Who, oh, old one eye, bellowed the smith. Your eye be lost to you, you frostbitten wretch. The frozen lord of the ice turned to gaze the one who dared to insult him. Yet the soul of the dwarf burned hot as a forge as he challenged the god of eternal winter himself. Fool ye be, old one eye, his blood beginning to freeze. Ye be not lord of the dread, ye be old one eye, the lord of chilly breezes. Old one eye could no longer tolerate the smith's insults, whose hammer never once stopped swinging, even as his bones began to turn into ice. A blizzard crashed into the mountain as the dwarf sought safety within the mountain hold. The smith's challenge rang throughout the cold night driving insult after insult into old one eye's frozen heart, each hammer blow louder than the last. For three days did the hammer fall, till on the third, a thunderous crash shook the mountain's halls, and all was silent. The dwarves climbed the mountainside to see what happened, and the sight was enough to bring tears to the stoutest of hearts. There on the peak, was the smith, frozen through and through, anvil cloven in two, and hammer shattered into pieces from the blow. Then, far to the south, came the first forge's roar, as Sirius brought Ojok down upon old one-eye's lidless eye, in honor of the smith's bravery and sacrifice. Four times since has Ojok rung out, signaling old one-eye's doom. Since then, how the dwarves continued to call out to old one eye as they forged in the winter storms, keeping the primal's gaze fixed upon the mountain hold till Sirius strikes the seventh and final blow.